sermon today will be delivered by our guest, seminarian and Yuk Zengyang Vidal, director from the Archdiocese. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What is faith? What is faith? It's a big question. And our answer to that question shapes a lot of what we do in the church. We are here over the weekend for a big retreat, talking about ministry a lot. We think about the sort of ministry that we want to offer to youth and young adults as they grow up in the church. We want them to grow up with a strong, resilient, and authentic faith, right? But what is faith? We think about the outreach that we do to people who have never heard the gospel before, or who've heard maybe a twisted or perverted sense of the gospel. We want them to, to develop a strong, and authentic, and resilient faith. But again, what is faith? I think in the church, we have two models or ideas of what faith is happen to be wrong, unfortunately, which says a lot about the ministry challenges and struggles that we've faced over the last century. Because in one sense, we tend to equate faith with religiosity, faith with organizational, organizational belonging. Right? Kids have faith when they show up to orthodox stuff. Kids have faith when they do orthodox things. We want them to slap icons on their walls, we want them to wear prayer ropes on their wrists, we want them to identify as Orthodox Christians. We want them to be part of the club. Faith is much more than that. There's another model out there, too. Faith as intellectual certainty. When the kids are here in our youth and young adult ministry programs, we want to make sure that they have all sorts of Orthodox perspectives in their heads to inoculate them for when they go out into the wider world. My faith is making sure that they believe Orthodox things and know Orthodox things. It's the books and ideas and so forth. But again, faith is so much more than that. And today's scripture readings give us a deeper clue as to what faith actually is. But I think as we, even as we articulate it here, right, that organizational sense of faith, that intellectual certainty sense of faith, hopefully we realize that something or someone is lacking from both of those definitions. The living God. The living God. Is much more about belonging to the right club. Faith is much more about belonging or identifying or believing in the right things. It is about communion and trust in the living God. And this is what we see in today's scripture readings. We'll start with the gospel. A familiar story, right? My father goes up to Jesus and tells him that I have a son and he's being oppressed by demons. And I took him to your disciples and your disciples did nothing for him. Which is a little weird. This comes in Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus has already sent his disciples out, and they've already gone out there and done wonders and cast out demons, but they can't for some reason. And it causes the man to doubt. Because then he goes to the Lord himself, and he says, I'm not really sure if you can do this either. Because your disciples did it. And Jesus isn't offended by those questions. He isn't troubled by those questions. He just tells them that if you believe, anything is possible. And the man falls down with tears in his eyes, as we just heard in the gospel. He says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Did he believe intellectually that Jesus would be able to cast out the demon from his son? No, probably not. But he believed and trusted in the person who was standing in front of him. And he falls in tears at the feet of the Lord and says, I don't get it, but I know you and I trust you. And Jesus does. Very easily, he casts out the demons. And later, when he debriefs with his disciples, they ask him, like, Lord, why couldn't we do this? We've done this before. Why couldn't we do this? Jesus tells them, this kind cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. Which is not to say simply doing the right stuff, right? Doing church things, prayer and fasting. What is prayer and fasting essentially? Fasting is the emptying of itself so we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Fasting is not relying on the things that normally give us strength, food, physical, material things, but beginning to rely in a deeper sense on the living God for our strength. Prayer is not simply magic words that we recite, but opening up our hearts so that the Lord can operate in and through us. Right? What Jesus is telling his disciples is that you're asking the wrong question. You asked why you couldn't cast out those demons. The right question to ask 
is why didn't we ask you to cast out those demons in us? Why didn't we open up our hearts and our lives for you, the living God, to act in and through us? Because you are the only one who can do this. That's what faith is. Not knowing the right formulas, not believing the right things, but knowing the crucified risen Lord. Trusting in the crucified risen Lord. And this is what we see in the epistle reading as well. Paul in Hebrews uses Abraham. It's a really beautiful example of faith. I think we know a little bit about the life of Abraham. Abraham received lots of promises from God. And those promises didn't really get fulfilled in the way that he would have expected. So God calls Abraham out of his homeland, and he tells him to go into the promised land, and he says, this is going to be yours through your descendants. And Abraham gets there, and he never stops living in tents as a visitor. He never fully received that land. Promise, but not really a promise fulfilled in the deepest sense. Where in his old age, God comes to him and tells him that you're going to have a son. right? And he gets this son, and just a little while later, God tells him, I want you to take your son up to the mountain and sacrifice him, kill him. Which makes no rational sense. How is Abraham going to wrap his mind around this? The longing of my heart, the son that I waited for until my old age, God wants him to take away from me? And yet Abraham gathers up his son, and he gathers up the wood, and he gathers up the knife, and he walks to the top of the mountain and is ready to offer his son back to God. So God sends an angel down to stop him. Paul unpacks this, right? He makes it clear to us that Abraham didn't necessarily understand what was happening in a rational sense. How can any of us understand in a rational sense what that means? Here's your son, now take him up to a mountain and kill him. Abraham had faith, not because of this, but because of this. Abraham had faith because he knew who God was. He trusted in God was. He put himself at the feet of God just like that father who had his son struggling with demonic possession put himself at the feet of the living God and said, I don't get this, but I trust you and I know you. And so often in our church, when we're more concerned with organizational belonging, when we're more concerned with organizational intellectual ideologies and philosophies, we're not leading young people, we're not leading ourselves to a real experience and encounter with the living God. And this is why faith wavers. Because faith is not simply about wearing the right stuff on our wrists. It's not simply about wearing the right photos on our Walls. It's not simply about showing up to the right things at the right times. It's about putting ourselves at the feet of the living God. And of course we're not getting there. Because his ways are such, so much larger than ours. How can we ever fully understand the living God? We can know him in a deep sense of the word. We can trust him in a deep sense of the word. We can place ourselves in his hands. Not as a distant deity, as our father as a Lord, as the one who loves us. This is faith. Not organizational belonging, not intellectual certainty. The church is not just a club, the church is not just a philosophy, the church is the very body of our living, living God. Let us bring ourselves to his feet. Let us look up to him in the face of our Lord and know him 